And so we started a new thing last week, which is I've changed the insert so that it leaves a place for you to take notes and reflections and then intentions and goals. And so what we're doing also is at the very end of the talk is I'm giving you a couple minutes to write things down so that you can actually take them with you and not forget by the time you get home. So if you would like a pen, would you raise your hand and Barbara's handing out pens right now. So there's a Christmas quote that I really love and it says, there are some people who wanna throw their arms around you simply because it's Christmas. And there are other people who want to strangle you simply because it's Christmas. <laughs> Can you relate? <laughs> the holidays are absolutely upon us and with that come so many opportunities to enjoy ourselves and to have fun and to celebrate. One of my favorite things about the holidays is I love Christmas music. I love that traditional Christmas music and I love singing along. There's something that just stirs me in that old traditional music. And I think what it is that stirs me is there's something about it that connects me with people across this entire globe and throughout eons of time because they listen to and sing those same traditional old songs also. And therefore, it feels sacred to me. And of course, I love the songs that I grew up with and singing them, and they cause me to kind of reminisce and to remember the good times and Christmases past. And I also love some of the new really raucous Christmas music, and especially the ones that talk about creating peace on earth, and Melissa Etheridge is one of those ones that I love to listen to. It's just raucous album, and it's really fun. And we did the funnest thing last week. We went to 10 Mile Brewing, which is a brewery that we like to go to, and they had a one-night event that was called Beer and Hymns. They had a six-piece band that was playing. That was a raucous band with fiddle and squeeze box and drums and electric, electric guitar and acoustic guitar and all the whole band members. And they were singing Christmas songs and they handed out booklets with the words on them. Is that me doing that up here? They had booklets that had the Christmas music in it. There were like 200 people at this event and everyone was singing. It was so much fun. Everyone was singing Christmas songs. Dylan's back there messing with that soundboard, seeing if he can figure that out. Tell me if you want me to change mics. I don't know what's going on. So anyway, this season is filled with opportunities. It's filled with opportunities to express and to experience our own creativity through things like baking and decorating the house for Christmas and gift making. Mike's here. Gift making and gift wrapping and all those things where we get to express our creativity. And there's so many opportunities during this season to actually express our love and to experience love through the giving and receiving of gifts and spending time with family and with friends and with people that we love and also with seeing people that we don't see very often at all and getting to spend time with them. Opportunities like what we just did in, in participating with Project Shepherd in bringing gifts for fam children of families that are in need. What a way to get to experience and express our own love of buying presents for kids that we don't even know and will never meet, probably will never even see or know in our lives. It's an experience of our love that we're sharing and what a gift that is. There are opportunities to experience the magic of the season just by seeing all the decorations and the houses that have Christmas tree lights on them and the trees that are decorated. And of course, the children who are so excited and see the magic of Christmas. We get to experience the magic through their eyes. And of course, so many opportunities to experience the sacred to experience the sacred through candle lighting services and church services and sacred hymns through that music, through spending time in the quiet and time in the stillness, spending time in love and just being present with our own I amness and our own beingness in the silence.
I love sitting in front of the Christmas tree at night with all the lights off and only the tree lit and to just sit and to be in that quiet is so rich and rewarding to me. And as you all know, there's a problem. And the problem is we get so busy and there are so many to-dos and sometimes we can feel like we have so many obligations that it can feel overtaxing and we feel overburdened and we feel overwhelmed by it all. It's so easy to get caught up in those to-dos and those obligations and those shoulds. And then when we feel overburdened and overwhelmed, we get grumpy and then we get resentful. Well, I don't know about you, but that's not really how I want to spend the holidays. Phil Donahue actually said December 25th has become guilt and obligation. I know that's how none of us want to spend this holiday season. And I know there are times when we feel sometimes like it's impossible to step out of those obligations. There's a quote that I love, it's by Anonymous, and it says, it's impossible, says pride. It's risky, says experience. It's pointless, says reason. Give it a try, whispers our heart. We'd love to step out of those obligations. Give it a try, whispers our heart. And so what we really want is to experience this holiday season in joy and in gratitude and in love. What we really want is to be filled up by this holiday season, filled up with the love and with the joy and with the potential that is so bright and obvious at this time of year. What we really want is to experience and to express love. What we really want is to experience that love that underlies this entire season. Do you sense that there's a love that underlies all of this entire season and all that it's made of and all that it's about? So the title of my talk today is Leading with the Heart. And I'm talking about that we, each and every single one of us, can experience this holiday season just like that, where we are filled up by the love of the season. We can experience a love-filled, joy-filled, beautiful holiday season when we let our hearts lead us. When our hearts lead us in what we do and what we don't do, then we get to experience that season that is filled with joy and with love and beauty. So there's a story that says, most of us have become familiar with the Amish people of the United States and know the Amish people avoid modern technology. They have no TV sets in their home, no telephones inside the home, and electricity is hooked into the barn, but not the house. Such a lifestyle seems to us very harsh and rigorous, but an Amish bishop once explained why it is that the Amish live this way. He suggested that most technology had, in fact, a negative effect on people's lives. Television was a good example. It brought violence and poor ethical values into the home. Does this mean that the Amish are against modern technology? No, explained the bishop. The Amish simply want to keep it in its proper place. The Amish weren't against telephones. In fact, he'd had one installed down the lane from his house. A telephone was handy to have in an emergency or to call distant family or friends. But why bring it into the house? Telephones intrude in our most precious moments of life, he said. You may be talking to your children or sharing something important with your wife. And if the phone rings, you will allow it to interrupt what you're doing. The family can be at prayer. And if the phone rings, you'll stop and answer it. Similarly, electricity could be a good thing if kept in its proper place. The Amish in his community had electricity in their barns to refrigerate their milk, but they kept it out of their homes. Why? Because they felt it disrupted the rhythms of family life and natural life. With electricity, people stay up late instead of going to bed. 
With electricity, people listen to the radio and watch TV that involve them with the outside world rather than with their Amish community. And what about tractors? If the Amish use electricity in their barns, why not tractors in their fields? The bishop explained that with a tractor, a person can plow their field on their own. But using a horse-drawn plow, the whole family needed to be involved. So rejecting the tractor was a way to create family solidarity. That is such an example of allowing what is important to a person, what is important to a person's heart to be the thing that guides and leads their actions and leads and guides them in making the choices of what it is that they do. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Letting our hearts lead us, letting what's important lead us through this holiday system, system, this holiday season, and inform our choices and decisions takes us where we want to go. And each and every single one of us here, if we and when we listen to our hearts, it will lead us to something different. Perhaps when you listen to your heart, it leads you to participating in sacred events because that's what's really important to you. Or perhaps it leads you to being and doing acts of service, helping others, lending a hand, sharing your spirit, giving of your gifts in a way that meets a need for someone else. Maybe it's about making things beautiful by expressing your creativity. Maybe it's about sitting quietly. But wherever your heart leads you is what's right for you. And so I have a couple of questions to ask you, and so I invite you to take out that insert on the back side of it, actually. And to close your eyes for a moment. And listening to your heart, allowing it to guide you, ask yourself and your heart, what do I want to experience during this holiday season? And listen within. What do I want to experience this holiday season? to ask yourself, what is important to my heart? As I move through this holiday season, what is important to my heart? And as I enter into this holiday season, what feeling do I want to create for myself? What is the feeling tone that I want this holiday season to be about? And so I invite you to go ahead and write those answers down.
And so your answer might be something about celebrating the birth of the baby Jesus or of celebrating Christ consciousness within humanity. Or maybe it's more about sharing love or being in gratitude and in joy for this full life that you're living. Maybe it's about being with family and friends or just experiencing the sacredness of life. But the thing is, you get to choose. And you get to create it however it is that you want to create it. There's a woman named Edna Ferber who was a novelist and playwright in the early 1900s. She said, Christmas isn't a season, it's a feeling. And that's what we want. We want to create that feeling that we want to experience and want to be in. And so, you know, every single Sunday we get together here and we stand on holy ground and we sit in sacred space. We rest in this sacred space. And the reason that we stand on holy ground and the reason that we rest in this sacred space is because we have created it to be so. We have created it from the inside out. We have created it through our intention and through holding space in consciousness for it to happen. That means knowing that it's possible and allowing it to happen. We create that by being open to it and then we follow through with actions that actually support that. But it starts with the intention and it starts with the idea, and it starts with the belief that it's possible, then we create altars, and then we sing music that feels sacred, and then we do prayers. But it's been guided by an inner intention to begin with. And so we show up then in anticipation of experiencing the sacred in anticipation of experiencing this sacred connection that we feel with each other as we open to that one infinite, boundless, and eternal presence. And we experience that together. But we created it. It didn't just happen. And so we always begin with an intention, and then you follow through with your actions. You know, if you had an intention to go to the Grand Canyon and you just left your house without a map, the chances are very slim that you would actually end up at the Grand Canyon. So it takes having the intention and the idea and your intention is that map that takes you where you want to go. And then it's followed through by your actions. You have to actually get in the car and start the car and push on the gas and steer in the direction that you want to go to get to the Grand Canyon. So you have your idea, your intention, and then you follow through with your actions that take you there. And so how do you do this then when it comes to the holidays? I think what you do is when invitations present themselves to you, things to do that present themselves to you, you ask yourself the question, is this thing in alignment with what's important to me? Is this thing that I've been asked to do or invited to do in alignment with my intention? And if the answer isn't an automatic yes, you can ask yourself a second question. Is there a way that I can see this or view this thing so it actually does look like and is in alignment with my intention? Let me give you an example. Say that your intention for this holiday season is to experience and to celebrate the love of family. And then your spouse invites you to their work party. And work parties aren't really your thing. They're not really at the top of your list. But can you reframe that invitation to go to the work party so that it actually is in alignment with that value of celebrating the love of family? Can you look at that party as an avenue for you to celebrate the love that you have with your spouse? Can you look at it as a way to celebrate the loving relationship that you share with each other? Absolutely.
And it's not about doing mental gymnastics. And it's not about manipulating yourself so that you're doing things that you won't, don't want to do. It's just a matter of looking at them to see if they indeed can be in alignment with your heartfelt desires and your intentions. You can also ask yourself the question, will doing this thing that I've been asked to do, will it leave me feeling drained and resentful? Or if I look at it from that other perspective, will it actually make me feel alive and vibrant and filled up and let me be in joy? That answers your question right there. Can I look at it in a way so that it allows me to be in joy and filled up? And if the answer is no, then leave it. Don't go. And if the answer is yes, then embrace it and do that thing because it's going to take you to your joy. And so my invitation as you move into and through this holiday season is to allow your heart to lead you in what it is that you're doing. To get clear about your intention. What do you want to experience this holiday season? What do you want it to feel like and the tone of it to be? What is your intention? These holidays, these holy days are for you. They are a gift for you to feel the love and the joy that already lives inside of you. They are a gift to fill you up with love and joy. These holy days, these holidays are a gift for you to experience your heart expanding and to experience your spirit expanding. That's the opportunity. They are an avenue for you to step out of the mundane world that we live in all the time and to experience spirit in your life and spirit in you and spirit all around you. It's an opportunity for that. And only you know how to take yourself there because only you have that answer for you. And so keep your intention at the forefront of your mind. Let your heart choose what it is that you do and you don't do. Ask yourself, is this a should or is this in alignment with my heart and my heartfelt desires? And then follow that leading. And when you do that, your holidays will be rich and fulfilling and deeply satisfying. And they will feel sacred to you. And so blessings at this holiday season and blessings to you as you step into the fullness of your life, which is the divine plan for you. And so blessings to all of you. And so I'd like to give you a moment in case you want to write anything else down that has come to you to take home with you. As I look around, I think, look, you're all students. But you know what? You're students of the spirit. And you're students of your own spirit. That's what you're doing. And so I invite you to join me in an affirmative prayer. 
And so we take our attention and turn it within where that one infinite indwelling spirit resides every single moment of our beingness. That one that was before time began and that one that will be unto the ends of the earth is that power and that presence we call God, spirit, infinite beingness, love, intelligence, the one, the divine, Yahweh, Allah, Christ. Regardless of what we call it, this one power and this one presence is right here, surrounding us and enveloping us and filling us from within. For it is this one power and this one presence that expresses itself as everything that is, everything that shall ever be. And so today it is that love and it is that light of the divine presence that leads us on our path. It is that that speaks to our hearts of a life most fulfilling, that speaks to us as a life that is satisfying and rich and is here as a gift for each and every single one of us. And so today we embrace that infinite wisdom, that infinite intelligence, that knowingness of the divine mind and allow it to guide us through these holidays. And we let go of that which doesn't serve us. We let go of that which is not in alignment with our hearts and with our spirits so that we might be filled up by these holidays themselves. And so I know that that presence goes with us in everything that we do, goes before us into every single situation, and makes the way plain and smooth and easy and beautiful. For this presence is magnificence itself. And as we look out into this world, we see magnificence everywhere we look. And so it is with a heart filled with gratitude that I release this prayer into that creative law of the universe, knowing that it is unfolding itself in and as our lives right this moment. Everything else is simply not. And so we stand in this presence and we stand in gratitude. And I release this prayer and I say, and so it is.